What's going on everyone? Today will sort of be a how-to on water cooling in Xbox 360, specifically focusing on water blocks. So I have three different water cooling setups, and if you saw the other video where we took apart that RGH3 Falcon, or uh, Jasper, that we were going to use for this one, uh, that one needs quite a bit more work before it's ready to get built upon. I don't want to pause this build, I've been really getting a lot of stuff done. This is the 420 build. So I want to get this water block comparison video done so I can get back to building this one and have a video on that. But anyway, a long, long time ago in a galaxy uh, right where ours is, XSPC made some really cool parts. This being one of them, which is a water block for the Xbox 360. Specifically, the FAT model. And besides the PS3 water blocks... Um, these are pretty much the only ones, like, ever designed to go over a CPU and GPU. Furthermore, this one is designed to still fit under the DVD drive. Probably would have been a little crazy for a company to come out with a part back then that said, oh, you gotta get rid of your disk drive during the very early stages of JTAGging. But this is a part that was discontinued a long, long time ago. I'm still the only person that I know of that has had any, um, besides seeing pictures of different builds on the internet, but we're going to focus on that one last because I wanted to build water-cooled 360s as of a couple years ago after getting rid of my last water block. I didn't have this, so what is the next best option? This was the first idea I came up with was finding these blocks here. So this one you can get on Amazon. You can get both of these on Amazon, probably other places. Now this one is completely unmodified. It is a generic GPU water block. Even though it is the lowest profile one you can get, yes, this one is skinnier, but once you put fittings on there, it's going to be a lot taller. Uh, this is still way too tall to fit underneath the DVD drive. So I've always had to use some sort of RGH or Zero Fuse or some sort of modded system when doing this because we're getting rid of the disk drive. Got one right here. That's it. It's sitting on the, uh, the drive, and you can see it's got a ways to go before it can touch the motherboard. This one, it has kind of a universal hole situation, um, but yeah, you don't have to do anything to it. You can just even use the hardware it comes with, and it fits the dimensions of the 360. Furthermore, it's the same dimensions as the Slim, the Xbox One, Xbox One S, Xbox One X. I believe I've mentioned possibly the Series S. I haven't had one of those in front of me in a while. And I honestly don't remember if those had the bigger X clamp like the Series X or not. Now, XSPC also made the one for the Slim, which is the same thing. It's just cut in half because obviously you only have the one processor. So, this one is good for the GPU and you can face it any one of these directions. You obviously can't go this direction because once you have fittings on there, it's going to run into the other block. And these are around $25.00. And then on this side, you can't use this block. Even with these shorter aluminum caps, you can't face it this way, you can't go this way, you obviously can't go that way, at least unless you completely move all the capacitors. But as soon as you put any sort of fitting on here, even a smaller barb fitting with a hose on it, it's going to be hitting this. So fitting on there, it's hitting that. That is when I found these blocks, and it's a generic CPU block. Now these have to be modified, and you have two options. You can either cut the ends of these off and drill your own holes. Just take an X clamp, place it over, mark the uh, holes there, and now it fits the dimensions of that. These blocks are around $15. Your other option, which is what I did the first time, was get a second one of these just to get this bracket off, and then you still have to kind of modify it on the inside to fit around this uh, top piece, and then you don't have to redo the mounting holes. You just have to shave the inside, but you do have to buy a second one of the $25 blocks. So why do that when you can just get two of these? That's what we've got going on in this one. Now these have the black top on it instead of the um, see-through. Cut the extra of the bracket that sticks out way past here. I believe they're meant for an Intel. Just cut that off, drill new holes, and there you go. 
for about the price of one of these, we've got a block for our CPU and our GPU. And either way, we can't put our disk drive in here unless you're going really fancy and just designing a whole new disk drive. So in our all stealth build, the plan for this one is for it to look completely like a normal Xbox 360, but it is water cooled. Now this here is just the top. This is the factory top that it comes with, but the person that briefly had this water block had it sent out to get a custom top made. So this is now basically a one of one part and it's way cooler because now it's see-through. As you can see, it sits right there over both chips. You've only got the two ports over here. So that eliminates having four fittings because obviously each one needs an inlet and an outlet. Now, something I'm just realizing is this top is definitely a lot thicker than that one. And now I don't know if a DVD drive is still going to fit over top. Not really. It's... <laughs> oh no. What if we just removed the bottom piece? Oh, perfect. Okay, we're good. I don't think he even thought of that because he wasn't going to have a disk drive in it anyway. You can't get these anymore anyway. But we are looking into scanning these plates, and obviously we can make these top pieces, so maybe in the future, 2026, water blocks for sale. Now this setup here, I still wanted to do this, even though like I said, you could get two of these if you wanted, and it's cheaper. However, this setup is going to have a reservoir in this area, and I couldn't have those fittings sticking up here, then I wouldn't have room. This is actually the reservoir right here triangle shaped so now we can have that roughly on there it might not be actually resting on there but you can see we've got plenty of room above it to still have our shell and it'll actually have a giant fan above this and if you're confused it's for Hans RX-7 from Tokyo Drift that's the theme of the build so this is going to represent the rotary piston now this build here again I could have gone either way the whole point of this one is to get everything as close to this side as possible so we have as much open space as we can. This area up here is going to be a little uh, grow closet since I need this area here for a little plant. So this does kind of give us a little more room even though we still have the hardware sticking up a little bit. In the end it helped a little bit more with the path of the loop. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it's cheaper. And our slim block over here, obviously you could also get a couple of these. Once again, just like these, discontinued a long, long time ago, never seen another one. But of course, it's the same dimensions for the fat. Both of these blocks fit just fine on the slim. You do have that capacitor problem on this side, but you can have this block facing this way. You should be able to have it facing this way as well. Or you can go with this one and not worry about the outsides. If you've seen either of my R2-D2 water-cooled builds, we use these blocks. Because again, if you're thinking about low profile-ness, because we wanted the fan on the inside, it's just not possible with one with the fittings on top. Shortest fitting you can really get is one of these 90s. And you can see just how much higher that's going to stick up. And that's really the most important part especially of a custom water cooling loop. From here, you can hook it up to whatever you want. Hook it up to your car radiator if you want. Cool it that way. Now, if you're looking for radiators that actually fit, this is a dual 50 radiator. I've used the triple 40 millimeters a lot. You're not going to get more than a 60 millimeter to fit back there. You can use, like I've done, the 120 radiators and have it like on the side is sort of like an intake or exhaust for pumps this one is a pump reservoir combo um, in a loop this small and on something that doesn't create nearly as much heat as like a full-blown PC believe it or not your reservoir is almost more important than your radiator if you can hold a whole bunch more water that's gonna help even more with holding heat transferring heat than a radiator that's you know smaller than that one like this one this is a single 50 millimeter. You can squeeze reservoirs like this. These are 50 millimeter diameter reservoirs. Uh, in our Darth Vader build, we had one of these about up here. We had our pump down here. I really like the Fobia DC-12 220 pumps. If you have a board with the shorter aluminum caps, it fits right in this corner with the intake up here. 
and the outlet this direction. Obviously it's pretty ideal to uh, squeeze a radiator in the stock fan position. You obviously have more room as there's no board here. It goes a little bit lower. You can fit a DDC pump with the standard top that it comes with, but you do have to use 3 8 as they have built-in barbs. Um, like height-wise, you can squeeze that somewhere along here, up here, something like that. Otherwise, you can go with a DCLT pump. And this is a dual pump top for a DCLT, but these are super tiny. You can get pump tops that's basically just half of one of these. And even with how thick this is, the pump itself is like sticks up down this much farther. And those you can fit in pretty much anything. Of course, at the cost of it not pushing nearly as much water as a Phobia DC-12 or especially a DDC. I mean, this thing is going to pump water pretty good. Any questions? Let me know. Which build sounds the most exciting to you? The all-stealth build, the Hans RX-7, or our little 420 build with our, uh, it's a ficus plant. You can try to go all internal like we did with that Vader build. Reservoir up here, pump over here, our blocks, our radiator in the back. They are going to stick out a little bit. This one's going to get pushed in quite a bit farther, but it's still going to stick out a little bit in the back. And at the top, we actually have, just like our bloody falcon build that we did that was all white with red blood splatter everywhere, we had one of these exact pump reservoir combos up at the top, and we kind of embed it in the uh, hard drive shell. So we'll like cut the center of this out so it slides over top just kind of acts as the trim. And yeah, I'm really excited to keep going on this one. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to not like, comment, or subscribe. Check out the link in the description to join the membership. Just gave away another controller. We'll have another giveaway at the end of this month. We're trying to do more than one a month if we can, but the more members we get, the cooler stuff we can give away. Maybe even something like this one day. Here's that phobia pump I was talking about. You can see it literally fits. What am I hitting? Oh no, okay, we're good. Literally fits right in that spot. You do have to trim the top shell a little bit. There's like little plastic braces in there, but... See you in the next video.